Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. At my signal, unleash hell. What up, y'all? It's Devin with Up TV, aka the Dot Connector, and the Most High Yahweh is working double time to let his children know that he will indeed be returning soon. And if you haven't been paying attention to the signs, then I suggest that you start opening your eyes and your ears because God is speaking and he's letting everybody know that the end is near. So, in today's video, I'm going to discuss what I feel are some of the most recent and alarming signs being revealed to us that prove that we are indeed in the final hour so please don't play around in these final days because if there was ever a time to give your life to christ if you haven't already then that time is now the most high yahweh has given us plenty of grace and space to be able to turn away from our sins and devote ourselves to his word if you think to yourself that it's too late for you you are absolutely wrong it is never too late as long as you have another minute hour, day, month, or year. God is granting you every second to get your life right, to repent and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So pick up your cross and start following Christ because time is short. Remember, God desires for everyone to be saved. First Timothy chapter two, verse one through four says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. At this point in time, if you don't see that a spiritual war is taking place right before your very eyes, then to be real, I don't know what to really tell you. But as a watchman, I will continue to reveal as much as I can as long as it's in the Lord's will. So without delaying any more, here are my top five signs. I've noticed recently that prove that the end is soon near. Family, I'm very concerned about food shortages coming to America. No, not local or short-lived shortages. I'm talking about a national food shortage that will affect everyone, everywhere, for a very long time. Would you be ready if that happened? Probably not. That's why I urge you to get some long-term storage emergency food from my friends at My Patriot Supply. They're the original Patriot Survival Company. Over the past decade, they've served millions of American families like yours. Their mission is your survival. And right now, you can save 25% on a four-week kit of emergency food that will save the day, probably soon. This four-week kit has a wide variety of delicious food that provides over 2,000 calories per day, the right amount for optimum survival. Go to uptvsurvival.com so you can claim your four-week emergency food kit and save 25% in the process. Order a tasty starter kit for each member of the family and they'll ship everything quickly and discreetly to your door. That's uptvsurvival.com. When it comes to the many signs that undoubtedly prove that we are in the last days, we can't forget about technology and how it's being used to control minds and now being made to merge with us, no longer making us a natural human, but a real life cyborg. This new technological beast system is being created as a way to control the world population when the Antichrist rises to power. Many people have their ideals about what the mark of the beast may be, but I personally find it odd that people today are willing to get an RFID chip implanted in their hands for security and for the consumer's convenience. I also find it odd that Elon Musk has created a brain chip in which he recently stated that they would be ready to put a chip in the human brain in 2022. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 says, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free in bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name 
is the Neuralink and RFID chip the mark of the beast that won't allow anyone to buy or sell? I don't know, but it's not hard to see how these technologies can definitely be used to accomplish this goal when the Antichrist makes his mark on every human on the planet. Law. So Neuralink, we um, we, we have uh, Neuralink's working well in um, in monkeys, um, and we we're also do, doing um, just a, a lot of testing. Um, and, and just confirming that it's it's very safe and reliable and uh, and that it, the, the Neuralink device can be removed safely. Um, people may have seen the uh, demo that we, we, we published uh, earlier this year with the video of a monkey p playing uh, the video game Pong uh, telepathically using the Neuralink in its in its uh, in its in its brain um, and uh, it's completely wireless uh, charges inductively. But basically, the monkey looks completely normal, and yet is playing a video game telepathically, um, which is, I think, quite quite profound. Um, we will have, uh, we, we hope to have this in our first humans, which will be uh, people that have um, severe spinal cord injuries, like tetraplegics, quadriplegics, uh, next year, uh, pending uh, FDA approval. On September 21st of 2021, a volcano exploded on the Spanish island of La Palma. The volcano has been erupting ever since, only recently stopping, although scientists say the volcano can begin erupting again any day now. This volcano has not only devastated the island, causing thousands to evacuate their homes, but many people and some scientists agree that this volcano erupting could trigger a mega tsunami, wiping out most of the east coast of the United States. As the La Palma volcano shows no sign of stopping its eruption, there is a possibility it could cause a mega tsunami, according to a 2001 study in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal. The study outlined how cracks below the surface of the volcano exacerbated by an eruption could cause between 150 to 500 cubic kilometers of rock to slide into the ocean at 100 meters per second. The New Zealand Herald outlines how the huge force that landslide generated could create massive waves up to 900 meters high that could eventually hit the coast of the Americas at heights of up to 25 meters, with a tsunami reaching Florida around 9 hours after the initial collapse. Subsequent studies have played down the risk of this kind of disaster occurring for a number of reasons. Informed by new models created after the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami, it has been argued that any collapse of the ridge would not occur with the force described in the original study, with one explanation for that being that it is likely any collapse would happen in stages. Most do, however, agree that any collapse would prove devastating for the Canary Islands around La Palma at the very least. After nearly three months since it first erupted, the Cumbre Vieja Volcano on the Spanish island of La Palma has fallen quiet giving scientists the first chance to study the main crater from its brink as the eruption appeared to be nearing its end. Take a look. There is an eerie silence on the Spanish island of La Palma. After three months of spewing lava, Spain's volcanic eruption, one that made global headlines, is finally nearing its end. Wednesday was the second straight day when the volcano was quiet. Even though there was no molten lava going downstream, some smoke continued to rise from the crest. Seismic activity in La Palma stopped on Monday. This is the longest period without tremors since the eruption began on the 19th of September. Grabbing the opportunity, scientists were quick to descend on the silent volcano. They collected samples of solidified black lava. We have to study it. They are the first two minerals to be formed, that is olivine and amphibole, the biggest ones and they give us a lot of information. Until we study the samples in the laboratory under the microscope, we know just a little. The eruption has sent rivers of molten rock down the slopes of Cumbre Veja for months. The size of the island has also expanded by over 48 hectares. Thousands of people have been evacuated, nearly 3,000 buildings have been destroyed and the island's main livelihood, which is banana plantations, have also been destroyed. Officials have warned that even though all seems well for now, the next few days will be crucial. Because it's not uncommon for volcanoes 
to resume expelling lava. They say that to confirm the eruption is over, the recorded data must remain the same for at least the next 10 days. As many people already know, Astroworld is an annual music festival created by rapper Travis Scott, which features many different other artists. I recently released a documentary breaking down and explaining all of the satanic symbolism surrounding this event. But Astroworld 2021 was not just another satanic event. Many people, including myself, believe that the victims were intentionally sacrificed while Travis Scott was performing at the fest. Many people tragically lost their lives at this show it is my belief that the most high used this event to once again reveal himself to the world leading many lost souls that were fans of Travis Scott to Christ many of them quickly woke up to the fact that they just attended a concert from hell and now fully realize that God is real and the devil is real link to the documentary can be found in the description of this video if you would like a full breakdown of how this event is another sign that the end is near you will not believe what Travis Scott just said about the Astroworld concert just recently, Travis Scott hopped into an interview booth with this big YouTuber who does a lot of interviews with a lot of music artists. So the interviewer ended up asking him questions about statements that people made about the concert whenever people were saying that it was satanic, that it was demonic, that it was a ritual, etc. And this is what Travis Scott had to say back to that. People say, um, your, your, your music played a role in this. Like I've seen them, you know, cite lyrics. You know, that encouraged this kind of behavior. I've seen him say your music is demonic and this was a satanic ritual. You, you think your music is to blame? I mean, no. I'm a, I mean, one, I'm a man of God. And what's crazy to me about that statement is the fact that he called himself a man of God. A man of God, according to the Bible, is a man that is going to strive to live the same way Jesus lived. A man of God, according to a Bible, is a man that's going to be after God's heart. But instead of being a man after God's heart, you're a man going after what God hates. You cannot be a man of God, but then be a man of doing things that God hates. It's contradicting in itself. That's like saying you love God, but then you just do everything that he just does not like you to do. People that are of God live lives that are pleasing to him. He'd have to ask himself, is he living a lifestyle that is pleasing him? Because the gates of heaven are narrow, and if you believe that you can live a life of sin and then believe that you will enter into that narrow gate, the gate that is so narrow and so small that only few will make it in, then you have to go back into your word, you have to go back into the manuscripts, and you have to read the word again. And it's sad because Travis Scott is such a big influence, especially to kids. And if he believes that him singing about sin, him rapping about sin, him talking about the concert being godly, Millions of people that love him and follow him and support him no matter what wrong he does are going to believe that exact same thing. That statement alone is going to lead many astray, which is why God is leading me to make this urgent video about it. I can't play calm about this. So no, you're not being a servant of Christ. You're being a servant of Satan. Jesus already talked about what was going to happen to the lukewarm church. Jesus already talked about in Revelation chapter 2 of what was going to happen to the churches that are compromising with sin. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we need to stop preaching this false gospel that the gates of heaven are wide and we need to realize that they are narrow and the gate to hell is wide. This is why we need to stop looking up to influencers so much and all these human leaders and all these rappers and making them idols and we need to start getting in our word and gaining understanding about what God is actually trying to speak to us. This generation is getting deceived day by day and it is time to wake up. In Luke chapter 21 verse 25 through 26 it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, which is happening now because of the Rona. Think about that as I continue on. With perplexity, the sea and waves roaring, man's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Between the pandemic, the confusion, the failing of man's hearts because of fear, and the many signs that we've seen in the heavens in recent years, we should already know that we are indeed in the end times. But I want to take a moment to show you real quick how many incredible signs we saw in the heavens in just 2021 alone, from eclipses 
to full blood moons to meteor showers to comets 2021 was full of signs and wonders here are just a few the song that just played or you hear it now is bad moon rising and that's that. because of the super flower blood moon you mentioned this dylan that a lot of people you might have seen it uh, early this morning oh a combination of a lunar eclipse and a super full moon. That's where my knowledge, knowledge stops. <laughs> Just the combo of those two things. But the pictures almost look fake. They do look fake because the moon, actually, when you have a super moon, it's, it's when the moon is closest to the Earth. So it appears larger. It's like 7% bigger and 14% brighter. Doppler 10 meteorologist Jeff Booth here. Our full moon this month, well, it's something special. It's actually known as the full sturgeon moon because fish were easily caught this time of year. But that's not what makes this full moon special. It's also known as a seasonal blue moon. And, well, I'm gonna start off and say the moon is not going to look blue. However, we call this term a blue moon. It's become a term in popular culture because it's something that doesn't happen very often. So what is a blue moon? Well, it can be one of two things. A calendrical blue moon, that would be the second full moon in a month that has two of them. So maybe you have a full moon on the first of the month, and you got a full moon on the 30th. So that second one, that would be known as a blue moon. Also, the third full moon in a season with four full moons. So most seasons only have three full moons. But this one, well, it's a little bit different. We had our first full moon just after the summer solstice. That was the strawberry moon. In the month of July, we had the buck moon. And then, obviously, this month is the full sturgeon moon. Then the last full moon of the season, the last full moon of summer 2021, that's going to be just a couple of days before the autumnal equinox. So technically the harvest moon will be the last full moon of the summer. So this third one in here, well, that's what we call the blue moon. Again, most seasons only have three full moons, but this summer, well, it had four of them. And these don't happen very often, as I mentioned. Seasonal and calendrical blue moons, well, there's something that happened generally every roughly two to three years, really on average of about two and a half to three years. Our next Seasonal blue moon will be in August of 2024, then May of 2027, then August of 2029. Again, every two and a half to about three years. Uh, the next calendrical blue moon will be in August of 2023. The next one after that will be in May of 2026. And then after that, it will be December of 2028. So again, something that doesn't happen very often, hence the term once in a blue moon. So there you go. Uh, again, that full moon did not look blue, will not look blue. However, though, it's something that doesn't happen very often, so we call it a blue moon. So hopefully uh, you enjoy that special full moon that we have this month. We won't have another one for a while. In fact, we'll have another one for once in a blue moon. I'm Doppler 10 meteorologist Jeff Booth. Be sure to take a look up at the sky tonight. NASA says a full moon known as the Hunter's Moon will be visible. It's officially full this afternoon at 357, but will be bright for the next few days. This is a live picture of it. Ooh. Very spooky. It gets, <laughs> gets its name because it used to be a sign for people to hunt in preparation for the oh. winter ahead. And I think we're ready for Halloween now, guys. I mean, this is the sign we needed that it's time for Halloween. It's getting spooky. <laughs> That's it, right? I need a little thriller yes. underneath that yes. moon right there. Jacob, get us going. Get us going. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to dance. I am not Zach Creed. <laughs> I'm not going to dance for you. <laughs> now, I happen to get some great pictures of the eclipse before it went away, which is basically gone now. Uh, we did have one of the best spots in town though i have no pictures of the eclipse but we are fostering a puppy no, i have terrible. beautiful I pictures of him i'll share that he's going to share the moon Brittany temper is live from george observatory in brazos bend state park Brittany, good morning you've been privy to the show all morning here that's right lisa and don't feel bad we talked to a lot of people out here who got some photos so we'll share theirs instead don't worry about it this is a fabulous spot it is pretty remote though i will say that and a bit of a drive to get out here but it is absolutely worth it check it out it is peaceful it is serene it is removed from the city light i believe that you can see orion out here uh constellation out here uh this or the stars rather um this photo i do want to share with you though check this out this is absolutely stunning this was taken by Chris Morissette. He took this from his cell phone through a telescope, and he says this location was just perfect for him to witness this in person. As you mentioned, uh, this lunar eclipse is the longest that we've seen in 580 years, lasting about three and a half hours. We have uh, uh, pictures and video from all across the city, from City Hall over to the Montrose Bridge. Uh, we also talked with people out here about why they decided to come early, some of them making the drive uh, around six o'clock last night, staying for hours, just waiting for these moments. Now, I want to bring you a three-way celestial tango. 
Is that a scientific term? Yes, it's a solar eclipse. So the sun, the moon, and um, all line up with the Earth to produce solar eclipse. And this is a live shot from Union Glacier in Antarctica. It's the only place in the world you'll be able to see this today. Um, and it's happening right now, and it's expected to last around, I think, about 50 minutes, I think. Um, today, they can last as long as 106 minutes. Um, so it's happening right at this moment in time, and we just thought we'd bring that to you because it's just so wonderful. Partial I think Chris, visible, Chris visible. is watching that as well as yeah. doing the weather. Is, uh, what I'm thinking, Chris, is we've been... I, I first saw that image about sort of six or seven minutes ago, and you can literally, fairly obviously, see the change minute by minute. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. I believe that uh, the zone of totality, that's where the, t the moon completely uh, covers the sun. I think that happens at about uh, 7.44. So you should be able to see that, uh, well, in just under half an hour. But yeah, it looks spectacular, doesn't it? We see, yeah, well, will, I, we see I, will we see like the circle, uh, you know, the light is behind it. Is that what it will look like? Yeah, you should see the, the atmosphere of the sun, the corona, poking out once the moon's gone straight over Beautiful. it. You know one thing I'd really love to hear is what the penguins make of it. Can you imagine a penguin colony <laughs> as the skies go by? Yeah. You just imagine, oh look at that one, it's gone dark. <laughs> Good penguin impression Chris, I'll, I'll give yeah. you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, shall I stick to the weather? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well moving on. Uh, okay. um, it's 70, you know, right, so we have this clock just below this camera and the seconds go on. And the reason I'm looking really closely at this is because at 7.44, it's now 7.43. 7.44 is supposed to be the point that this solar eclipse completes. That you're, we're showing you a live shot from Union Glacier. This is in Antarctica. And a three-way celestial tango, as it's described. This is when the sun, there we go, the moon, and they line up with the Earth to produce this spectacle, a total solar eclipse and yes yeah, actually this part this can only be seen from antarctica at this moment in time it's taken about 50 minutes to happen and here it is the recently discovered comet is on its way into the inner solar system it's known as comet leonard it's found actually just january 3rd of this year and has actually been kind of screaming through the deep space on a 35,000 year trajectory we suspect. Stargazers can already see the comet in the sky. Leonard can be found in the east before the sun rises, passing between Arcturus and the handle of the Big Dipper. It might possibly be found by the naked eye, but most likely you're going to need a telescope. Your comet's going to look like a strange diffused ball of light drifting through the sky. It may be the brightest comet this year. But according to NASA, comets are notoriously difficult to predict in terms of brightness and visibility. As Leonard makes its closest encounter with the planet, the comet will also approach Earth's horizon. That's expected around the 12th, meaning it will likely be brighter, but more challenging to observe. It'll be about 21 million miles away at that point. Around December 14th, the comet Leonard switches over to being an evening object, showing up in the sky about an hour after the sun sets progressively fading in brightness as it heads towards the sun. These next two weeks will be the only chance you'll get to see the comet. NASA says it's unlikely to return to the inner solar system. Comets are wily. The trajectories are equally influenced by the things around them. So there's a possibility that this comet may actually gloop around the sun but not make it back. Catherine Hawley, Fox 13 News. And last, but most definitely not least, I can't end this video without talking about one of the most important signs that was recently revealed to us. This sign should without a doubt be enough proof for anyone wondering if we are in the last days or not. A statue was recently gifted to the United Nations from Mexico called the Guardian for International Peace and Security. This statue eerily resembles the beast which was described in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power in his seat and his great authority. If you ask me, this is definitely a huge sign that we are indeed in the final hour and too big to be ignored. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 says, For when they shall say, 
peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they should not escape. Bro, no. Bro, no. Are they doing this right in front of us? What's going on here? This is the beast from Revelation 13 too? And the beast I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. I ain't trying to get close to that. Bro, no. Bro, no. Bro. The first beast was like a lion and had eagle wings. That's the beast, the first beast in Daniel 7, 4. Are we here? Get right with God now. Confess with your spirit that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and you will be of God. This stuff blows my mind. You don't have much time. You have to repent. That means to change your mind. God put our flesh and our spirit contrary to one another on purpose, so we cannot do the things that we would. That's why we're told to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's the choice. The devil's a liar. He wants you to put faith in doubt. Okay? He don't want you to have faith in hope. God made it so easy a child could understand. Good, evil, heaven, hell, God, devil, righteous, wicked. If you've ever been loved or loved, you know it demands sacrifice. God is love, and he sacrificed his son for us. Believe in Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone tell you any different. They're liars. But what are your thoughts? Have you noticed any of the signs I pointed out in today's video? And what are some of the signs you may have recently noticed that you would like for me to talk about in the upcoming video? Sound off in the comment section and let me know. And because there will be no Up TV without viewers like you, I would like to give a special shout out to anybody who has donated or supported the channel in any type of way. This is Devin with Up TV. I love you, family. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that bell so you get notified anytime I upload a new video. As always, give your life to Yeshua, and I'll holla at y'all later. Peace. Thank you for watching Up TV. If you like this video and would love to see more, check out these great videos here. And don't forget to subscribe to Up TV and Up TV 2 for even more great videos. <laughs>